Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. In this first of a series of videos on dancers, we discuss friction. The motivation for studying dancer friction is twofold. First, it destroys control quality. Second, it is an epidemic design problem. So how much friction is allowable? The answer is simple to estimate. You only need to know three things. First, you need to know the minimum tension that the line is to run. Here, we are using 10% of a 10 PLI strong web. Second, you need to know width. Here, we have a 100 inch or 2.5 meter machine. Finally, you need to estimate what kind of quality you want for your process control. I would suggest a starting point of no more than 5% tension variation and we will allot most of this to measurement resolution and hope that the drive doesn't add too much to this. So now all we need to do is multiply this all out to get the maximum allowable friction. In many cases this is only a few pounds or a couple of kilograms as seen in this example for an ordinary web on a wider machine. Narrower machines or more delicate webs must even be better. In most cases, dancer design needs to be so delicate that you could displace the dancer assembly with your little finger. If dancer friction becomes excessive, control becomes bang-bang, like your furnace, rather than analog. So now we know how much friction is allowable. So how do we know how much friction we actually have? There are two simple ways. In this slide we will use a force gauge and in the next slide we will use a pressure gauge. Both measures are with the web off and the machine stopped. Step one is to measure the force to raise the assembly using a suitably sized force gauge. Step two is to measure the force to lower the assembly down using that same force gauge. Friction is merely half the difference of the raise and lower force. This should only be a few percent of your minimum tension in compatible units of measure. The second method is simpler for measurement because we will use what is probably already an existing pressure gauge. Analogous, we measure the difference between the raise and lower pressure with the web off and the machine stopped. The harder part here is we need to back calculate friction from arm and piston geometry. This is simple enough for most engineers. One last consideration is that the total control range from minimum to maximum tension should be at least 30 psi or 2 bar. The reason is because the regulator control pressure is seldom much better than a tenth of that. Sometimes this means that the dancer must be counterbalanced either mechanically or pneumatically and sometimes this means the cylinder may need resizing to keep the pressures between what can be controlled at even a crude level, perhaps one half bar or seven psi, and what is available in the plant that may be four to six bar or 60 to 90 psi. So, what if your dancer friction is excessive? You have one do-nothing choice of accepting poor tension control. You have two better options, both of which involve redesigning the dancer. In either case, it is probably a good idea to send your machine designer back to web school so they don't do that again. Thank you so very much for watching this module in my plant practical series. Please stay tuned for more dancer and other web handling topics.